Please be advised that this video is for the sole purpose of entertainment. Any views of purely my own are subjective and may not necessarily be true. I do, however, do extensive research for all of my videos. All photos have been found on the public domain. I am using them under the Fair Use and Fair Dealing guidelines. I urge everybody to do their own research. Well, hello, it's Murky Meg here. It's Friday the 22nd of November and today I'm going to be delving into all the speculation over the lawsuit that Megan is taking the Daily Mail and the Mail on Sunday to court over false allegations with regards to the letter that they published that she sent to Thomas Markle. It doesn't just involve this. She's apparently put a lot of so-called wrongs right, whether they're correct or not. But again, I'm getting quite confused with all this. My head is spinning with who said what. So please bear with me while I try and lay down exactly what has happened. So we all know that Megan sent her dad a letter that was shortly after her wedding. This letter remained secret for six months and it wasn't released to the public until five of Megan's close friends spoke to People. It's widely speculated that People magazine is actually Megan's mouthpiece. We all know about it. She sends them tidbits via, whether it be via her or via her friends, they are the mouthpiece of Meghan Markle. So can you actually believe anything that they report? Because they are literally spoon fed exactly what she wants to be in the media. So in February of this year, People magazine spoke to Megan's or some of Megan's so-called close friends and they opened up about Megan and how they love her and they know her and that the media is being very unkind to her. Now, during this article, friends touch on the fact that Thomas Markle has said that he can't contact Meghan, and they say that's absolute nonsense. One friend said that he knows how to get in touch with her. He never called, he never texted. It's super painful. You think about Meghan Markle. She is very well known for saying, if you speak to the media, you are cut out of her life. This is old news, I know, yet these five friends spoke to People magazine. But it was okay because, do you know what? They spoke about her in the most glorious light, so she was fine with that. So then what happens is that Thomas Markle then goes to the papers and tries to defend himself, saying that I have tried to contact her, gives them lots of examples, and he shows them a letter that he's had for six months or more, and basically says, this is what I've received. He said that it would have remained a secret had its existence not been revealed by unnamed longtime friend of Meghan's in American People magazine. Now, this letter was portrayed in two very different ways. On one side, we have Meghan's friend saying that how she loved him, that she adored him, how she's only got one father. And the mail then printed very different side of the letter. But this is predominantly the reason why she is suing the mail. And she said that they have deconstructed the letter and put it out in a very negative light and that they should have printed it as one whole piece. They've edited it to suit their narrative. Now, without seeing the whole letter, we can't no, for sure, to be quite honest, it's going to be interesting when the court case comes up. However, new documents have now been released showing exactly what she is disputing. She's also come out in saying that she wanted to put a few things right in the aspect of some so-called lies that have been published about her. So in these new court documents that were submitted on the 11th of November, not only does she detail the letter which she says, the claimant intended the detailed contents of the letter to be private and certainly did not expect them to be published to the world at large by a national newspaper and without warning. The documents reportedly state, adding that the omitted parts of the letter demonstrate the claimant's care for her father and others. Now, these are just a few of the issues that she is disputing. She says that these are untrue. The stories include one claiming that she and her husband, Prince Harry, spent more than half a million pounds to soundproof their Frogmore Cottage home. But that's not what they said. Nowhere in this article were taxpayers' 
funds ever mentioned. It says the couple may have to pay out. There's also an implication that they didn't, in fact, buy a five grand copper bath, but they're saying that this didn't happen. That is really petty. This didn't hurt their reputation, the fact that they were paying five grand for a copper bath. It's their money. They can do with what the hell they like. No implication was taxpayers' money ever said that they were going to pay for this bath. This is a petty response. Oh, you said that I'm going to pay a cup of bath and I haven't. So bloody what? There are far worse stories out there about you, to be perfectly honest. It just seems like it's tit for tat. The court documents also suggest that articles were put out that a yoga studio was being built an orangery was being built, and a tennis court was too, all at the expense of the taxpayer. I've never read this. I've never read that those things were going to be on the taxpayer's purse. I don't think so anyway. Otherwise, I'd be much more angry than I am now, to be perfectly honest. Have you ever read that? Have you read that this orangery or the yoga studio, or that the tennis court was ever going to be at the taxpayer's expense. I might be wrong, I could be wrong, you know, but as I read these tabloids, I know I'm biased, I know that. I know that my dislike for Meghan Markle will always sway the way that I read an article. So if it wasn't implied that the taxpayer's money was being used, what is the problem with the papers? printing these articles. It's not really hitting them in a negative light because you know, we all know they have a lot of money and they can do with it what they will as so long as they don't use the taxpayer's money. I'm okay with that. Fine, go ahead, spend it, it's your home. Do with it what you will. But by actually saying, they've said to me about this and it's not true, what you're actually doing is looking very petty. Now let's move on to the so-called baby shower. She said that it's untrue that her mum hadn't been invited. She had. She just couldn't attend because of work commitments. Absolute bullshit, to be perfectly honest. I don't believe that one with a big fat barge pole. If your only daughter is having a baby shower in New York, you drop everything. You go. The claimant's mother was of course invited and the claimant also offered to buy her airline ticket, the lawyer's state. However, her mother was unable to attend due to work commitments. <coughs> yeah, right. The court papers also read the baby shower, which actually cost a tiny fraction of the 300,000 falsely stated in the article, was organised and hosted by one of her best friends from university. The 15 guests who attended the shower were close friends and included long-term friendships, some of which had existed over 20 years. So she's saying that the baby shower didn't cost that huge amount of money. But let's face it, she is not allowed to accept free gifts. So somebody had to pay for the Mark Hotel. Somebody had to pay for the flowers. Somebody had to pay for the catering. What about that big fat private jet that she flew back on? The cost adds up. If you pick apart every single element of that baby shower, you'll find that it does come to that amount. The fact that she didn't pay for it is immaterial because it was her baby shower. She allowed it to happen. I'd like to see more evidence of what it actually cost than what its implied cost is because I think the cost will be in excess of that amount of money. Things aren't cheap, certainly not huge celebrity baby showers in New York. What about the security? It, it's boggling my mind that she's saying that that's not true, that, that it's a tiny fraction of the cost reported. No, it's not. Just because you hopped on George and Amal's private jet doesn't actually take away the fact that you did it and how much it would have cost normally. It still happened and we have to equate that cost in to the fundings of the baby shower. My mind is getting so tangled right now. It seems that she's coming back with some very petty defences. And I just can't wait for this to happen, really. I can't wait to pick apart this court case. And the fact that the Daily Mail haven't settled shows that they have quite a strong case, in my personal opinion. But what do you think? Do you think this is just all hitting back because she can? Do you think it's right that she's doing this? Do you think she has every right to defend the things that are said about her? Let's face it, she's a royal. Royals have always faced 
criticism, especially ones that don't toe the line and adhere to protocol. Is it fair or have the tabloids been fair to her and do you think she has a right to hit back at these so-called false articles? I'm going to finish today very quickly on something that really did make me giggle. So you know the fact that we had the whole hoo-ha, nobody asks if I'm okay, oh it's not fair. Well, article came out yesterday saying that nobody is apparently speaking to them or texting them and they're kind of shut out in the cold a little bit. Well one, I think the royals are actually having a little bit of a major crisis somewhere else. Not all about you Meghan and also two, this hit the news this morning. Prince William and Kate Middleton are reportedly hurt because Prince Charles has sided with Meghan amidst their alleged riff. Charles speaks to Meghan most weeks to see how she's doing. He rarely picks up the phone to call Kate. He'll invite the Sussexes over without telling or asking William and Kate and days later he'll let it slip in conversation leaving William fuming. So somebody does ask if Meghan's okay. It's all so infantile. But one thing's for sure, I bet your bottom dollar she won't sue International Business Times for that article, will she? No. As always, let me know what you think about today's video. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, hit subscribe and hit that notification bell. I'd like to thank everyone who has donated to my channel. It's because of your kind generosity which enables me to release worthy and interesting contents. So I say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you very soon.